Hey guys, in this lecture, what I want to do is go over the welding symbols for fillet welds. We're going to go over a lot of little details, we're going to talk about every little thing that could possibly be on there. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with a T-joint that I have right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a symbol and I want to go over the parts just as a little review. So that way we're kind of building on what we already know and we're getting a little bit more uh, exposure to it. So we have our joint down here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw a reference line. Remember that the reference line, on the top side of the reference line is the other side, and on the bottom side is the arrow side. It's gonna have an arrow that comes off of it that is pointing at the joint, just like so. And on the end, we're gonna have a tail. Remember our tail is good for putting notes and stuff into. It could be WPs, it could be the type of welding rod, it could be just anything that's kind of special about that process or that symbol. It could also link to other symbols, things like that. So that's a review. Now, for a fillet weld, we're gonna have a triangle mounted on top or on bottom, depending on which side you want it to be on. This is on the other side. So that means there's going to be a weld over here, like so. Notice the similarities between this triangle and this fillet weld. This one makes a triangle too. So whenever you're looking at a symbol, you can kind of see that this weld at, or this symbol matches the weld that's going to be put in place. Something to think about, kind of, kind of get that uh, memory work in there. Now, if we went ahead and we put a, another one on the bottom, just like so, that would mean there's a fillet weld on this side. So there's a triangle here now. Now that we kind of got the idea of what the symbol for a fillet weld would look like, I want to start adding some more details into that, um, that symbol. So if I wanted to say what size weld this is going to be, remember we talked about sizes of welds, remember you, we talked about how the leg length is that measurement for a weld size? Well, if I wanted to put it on the symbol and I said I want it to be a quarter inch uh, weld right here, what I would do is behind it, we would do a one quarter on both of these. Okay, it doesn't, if you put it here, it doesn't work for this weld. It's gotta actually have its own. Now, you can also do a, like a one quarter dash, let's say uh, three eighths here. And this one will actually be an offset leg. Remember unequal legs, I was telling you about that before. They can be unequal. So this would be how it would, how it would be written. The quarter inch would be for the vertical up leg and the, the, the three eighths would be for the long leg out. Again, that might be used if you're going to have some parts sliding together. Um, it's not very popular to have unequal legs. So let's go ahead and continue on. There's a couple other measurements we could add in here. Sometimes there'll be a 2-5 written right here. And this would mean that you're going to be putting a 2-inch weld every 5 inches on center. So let me clean this off and I want to show you what that's going to look like. Okay, so what I got here is I tried to show an intermittent weld. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, especially because I'm not great at drawing 3D items, but I've got some great uh, pictures linked below um, in the notes, so make sure you check those out. Um, what I have is, remember, 2 inch dash 5. So that means a 2 inch intermittent weld with a 5 inch center. So if we look at this weld right here, I've got 5 inches from here to here, and that's at the center of these welds. And that weld is 2 inches wide. I don't know if this one kind of a little bit better, it's even harder to see, but it's going to be five inches to the center of each bead or in each intermittent weld, and they're two inches wide, okay? So I ho hope that helps you guys out a little bit. Now, there's another uh, level to this. If we drew one, because remember, this is on the arrow side, so it's the one that the arrow is actually pointing to. If we drew it where it was offset like this, and we put another 2-5 here, it would actually be intermittent welds that are not in line with each other. They would actually be on the opposite side of the plate. It would be in, in the middle of this five inch instead of right in exactly in line with these two inch beads. So something to think about, remember if they're offset like this, if it's just a straight line that goes up like this, then it would be directly in line. So hope that helps you guys out. Let's go ahead and continue on. I want to talk about some surface finishes or facing to some fillet welds. All right, so again, we have our reference line. I'm gonna draw it just like that, and I'm gonna do an arrow down to nothing because we're not worried about anything. Now, remember before when I drew my triangle like this, 
That triangle cannot be flipped around. It actually has to be pointing that direction. Even if we were to put the arrow off this side and we put the tail here, that, that triangle would still kind of be facing that side. So just remember that it's more of a, like a correct thing. Just try to make sure it's facing that side. Um, now let's talk about some surface finishes. Remember we talked about convex, concave, and we talked about some ground finishes before. So I'm gonna show you the symbols for each one of those. So if it was a concave, it would have a inward domed kind of C shape to the outside right here. If, let's go ahead and we'll put one on the bottom, and this one will be for a convex. It will have a domed outward bead. Now, if we wanted to have one that we wanted to do a ground finish on or a metal working process, it doesn't always have to be ground, it could be machined, it could be a couple of things. So we would just have a nice straight line that runs parallel with the face of that, that uh, fillet weld there. So that kind of concludes um, everything that we need to add on to go into fillet welds. If you guys have any questions or um, you know, have seen something and you want to talk about it, please let me know. We're gonna go ahead and continue into um, fill, welding the fillet weld first. And then in the pipe to plate project, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some other little things onto this, um, but mostly, uh, most of it is still a fillet weld. We're just gonna kind of get into the field work uh, symbol and the all around symbol. So hope that helps.